Hey everyone, welcome to Lone Bean Babble, your source for everything Lone Bean. I'm Robbie Robertson, VP of Marketing at Lone Bean. And I am Paul Sims, Manager of Training and Analytics at Lone Bean. On this episode of Lone Bean Babble, we're going to talk to Wes Lazier, new VP of Sales for Lone Bean. We'll hear about Wes's history with Lone Bean, his opinion of the current state of the mortgage market. We're also going to find out what he's doing to stay sharp during this pandemic and also what he does for fun. So uh, it's going to be a great episode. So let's get started. Let's go. Let's get right into it. Uh, Wes, why don't we get started by just telling us a little bit about your history with uh, mortgage, a little bit of your history with Lone Beam, and, and kind of uh, how you came to be here today. Well, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, babble about what's going on in my world. Um, it, it's pretty fun. It's been seven and a half years with the company, uh, and we've seen this thing grow from nothing to a true company. Uh, really, I joined the company back when we had a handful of customers that were beta customers. Uh, I was brought in to be the salesman, which I discovered pretty quickly. I actually like that role. Uh, I'd always been working for big companies, you know, credit risk manager, that type of thing. So I never really worked for a small company, and I felt I was taking a huge risk here. But I discovered that I really like the hunting. I like the, the negotiating. I like the discussions. I like the networking, digging in deep to the product to know more than I need to know so my customer understands it. Uh, I never knew that was me because I'd always kind of taken safe path opportunities previously. Uh, but when it was offered, it was offered to bring us to market, to start going to trade shows, start network, networking with uh, my Rolodex of people that I knew. Uh, and I immediately knew what this was going to bring to lenders. I knew the value of this. So, you know, I think I've stuck with the company because I've really seen what this does for lenders. I hear every day from prospective uh, clients that this is going to make a change in their life. This is going to make people happy. This is going to make the process more productive. Uh, so it's, it's, for me, it's, it's the perfect storm. It's the, it's the credit side, it's the networking side, it's the technology all pulled together into this, into this world. And I enjoy it. So Wes, you've, uh, as you mentioned, you've been here uh, at Lone Beam since the very beginning, but you have recently taken on a new role. Can you tell us what that role is and um, how, how you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been uh, brought up to the uh, VP of sales. So I'm over the organic sales internal team as well as uh, new client acquisition. And I love that. I'd love to, uh, I want to thank my mom, my dad, <laughs> uh, my dog, Kevin, for the opportunity, <laughs> the opportunity to play this role. Uh, I want to thank Steve uh, Puckett, our CEO, for putting me in this chair. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a new space for me. And I, I always wanted to t kind of have this role uh, over the organic sales as well as the new sales. Um, We've got more than 360 clients that need attention. They need to understand more. They need to, to buy into our value proposition, drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak. Uh, we've got a, over 130 prospective lenders who are sitting out there waiting to learn more about us and for us to bring them along. All that is fantastic stuff, and obviously I can't do it by myself. So I've got a team of account executives, four account executives today. Uh, they're handling all the existing clients while I handle the new stuff. Um, each account exec has vendor background. They know how to talk the talk. They know how products work. Uh, and they're currently digging into their client base, uh, having those conversations. Um, so I, I really see my job as not only a backstop for them when they have these client conversations, but also to help them make relationships and maybe have introductions to understand the needs of the customer and to drive growth. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple. When, when it really comes down to it, handling customers, you listen to their needs and you fulfill it with some sort of solution. And that's what I'm trying to uh, further the, the education, the awareness, and the abilities of, of the account execs. Um, so I also want to ask you about, obviously, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. How has that affected your position at Lone Beam, what you do here? And how has, it, how has that affected you personally as well? Uh, COVID-19, yeah, never seen anything like this before, for sure. Uh, Texas is a, in a current, current bad place. But like most people, uh, you know, we're working from home, safe and secure away. Uh, I've done this for seven years, so working out of home is very comfortable for me. Uh, you have to have good discipline around it. Some people can do it, some people can't. But I, I think this is a great opportunity to test those margins and see uh, how business can perform. It, it is, like you said, kind of a, a new norm here. Um, personally, when I leave the house, I do wear a mask. I think that's the right thing to do for Absolutely. neighbors, friends, community. Um, and fortunately, I've got no, no health scares in my family right now. Everything is fine. Uh, uh, we're all safe and secure. We were going to have family come next month and visit. And between the two families, we decided that was not the right idea. Uh, no point putting people at risk. Uh, but on the work front, I think it, it's all about communication. So people say, oh, I can't see there. They're not at the desk at 830 in the morning, that type of thing. You know what? If they're getting the job done and they're nailing it, 
Uh, I don't care if they sit in, in, in the middle of Tahiti or where they are. Uh, we need communication and with regular one-on-ones, regular team meetings, we can uh, talk about the things we need to talk about. We can share client experiences. I had a fantastic success story this morning from one of our AEs on a conversation with a new client that uh, I just sent up the chain. It was it was unbelievably fantastic conversation and where they're going, what they want to do. And so we're going to share that between the other AEs to see what the experience is like. Uh, we've adopted you know Teams and GoToMeeting and Zoom and all those different tools to communicate well. Um, it's the new norm, but since we can't go to greet clients personally and shake their hand, uh, it's all we can do. You know, it, it, I think we're very functional. Some of the things you mentioned, one, when you actually you joined the Lone Bean, and it sounds like it uh, kind of echoes your, your conversations with your AEs, which is around education, getting them to understand. So you had a lot of mortgage experience. Um, however, you uh, came into kind of a technology field and maybe it was kind of a new bag for you. You mentioned that uh, you had to kind of get to get to understand how the vendor space works. And you also mentioned with your AEs, you're trying to support them and help educate them. Um, you know, how do you do that? How do you keep yourself aware? How do you, uh, what resources do you use and uh, what have you used to kind of help yourself and help them? Well, it's, it's really about uh, keeping your ear to the ground, talking with clients. Uh, I've got a, I've got a, pretty broad uh, group of people that I talk to on a regular basis on what's going on in the industry. Uh, I don't feel like I'm out of touch with what's going on because their share specifically, you know, rates down at, at two and five eights right now in a 15 year mortgage. That's kind of stuff you don't get just by wandering through the Wall Street Journal or looking at, at uh, you know, CNN. Uh, you need to talk to these people and understand what's going on. What are they doing to adjust to the environment? What are they doing in work from home? What are they doing to control their application volume so it doesn't overwhelm them or it doesn't run away from them? Uh, so really, sharing information like that as I hear it with my team gives them awareness of what's going on. I had um, one of the AEs this morning sent me an article that they came across that I had not seen. And so we're sharing information back and forth, getting ourselves smarter and trained in what's going on in the industry. Uh, it, it's all you can do because you, you can't do this by yourself and, and it takes a team to make it happen. Nice, thanks. Um, so, you know, obviously there's a lot of speculation going on uh, about the mortgage industry itself, you know, kind of by and large, the, uh, the U.S. economy by and large, the global economy. So, you know, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, the mortgage industry? Um, you know, uh, what are you most worried about what keeps you up at night, so to speak, around the mortgage industry? Uh, well, first of all, nothing really keeps me up at night because I really sleep well. Um, I've always been a good sleeper, which is a good thing in this industry. <laughs> but I will say, yeah, that's right. Uh, I think there are three things that really bother me in the industry that, that are potential derailers on a lot of things. First of all is the unemployment. Uh, unemployment is obviously huge. You know, Certain real estate markets have been devastated by that. When people don't have jobs, they can't get a mortgage. And even when they have an application in flight, the mortgage lender has to go back and revalidate things and make sure they're still employed, that they, they still have income coming in. Or maybe the spouse has had to stay at home to take care of children for schooling and now they can't work. A lot of shift in the market, uh, but it's pretty simple. If you don't have income, you can't get a mortgage. So unemployment is a, is a huge factor here. Uh, second thing I think is, 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 and I wish I knew the answer on this, is interest rate motion. You never know day to day what's going to happen, what's happening. I think interest rates are starting to bump up a little bit. That can by itself uh, temper any kind of mortgage activity uh, and interest in people applying for mortgages. Uh, the purchase market is even slowing down a little bit more than it was before. Uh, it, it apps fell, I think, last week for the first time in, in two and a half months. And that's, that's kind of interesting. And then the refi is kind of drying up a bit. So interest rates are driving a big part of that. And, uh, you know, how much lower can they go? I mean, really? So that's, that's the third one. I think lenders could have a, a tough time ahead of them. And the third thing I would say that, that is, is kind of different is the businesses closing. Uh, that's such a huge impact, but not necessarily from an employment perspective. I mean, it is, but um, it's really about tax revenue to municipalities. So if the tax revenue is not coming in because businesses are closing, you know, cities have certain expenses. They, they don't have deep pockets necessarily. So it really becomes a question on where are they going to get the revenue from? Well, we might be, have an opportunity to bump real estate taxes 10% on homeowners. That can impact home ownership, likelihood of qualifying. Uh, so it's a whole ripple effect. You know, they're all kind of connected together in some way. But I think the unemployment, the interest rate factors, and businesses staying closed, those are huge things that I think could really impact the mortgage industry, which, of course, ripples to us. 
So great, great concerns. Yeah, there's a, a whole lot of uh, items up in the air. Um, so let's change gears, you know, a little less somber topic. Uh, you know, what are you doing for fun? With <laughs> Does Wes have fun? <laughs> for fun, let's say I work. Um, <laughs> those, are, those are spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I go to bed at two in the morning, wake up at three. Um, no, I'm fine. Well, you got to have fun. Got to get out there. Um, so outdoors is probably where I have most fun uh, boating. So water is the great equalizer in my mind. I still remember the really? day when I worked at Bank of America and I had had a day of it. I was at Bank of America living in Charlotte. We lived on a lake. It was a fantastic lifestyle. And we're sitting there and, and I get home and my wife is sitting there at home and I walk through the house. I throw my suitcase or my briefcase and my uh, jacket on the, on the chair and I say, I'll be back. And I walked out and I jumped on the boat. 60 seconds later, life is good. I, I really find that even two hours out in the water, an afternoon, even just thinking about going in the water is, is just settles my mind, uh, makes me feel good. So that's probably a big one. Wow. Um, the other is uh, home projects. I'm in the middle of retiling a bathroom and I have learned a whole lot of new things <laughs> since doing that. Nice. Some new language, uh, some new tools. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, it's all it's all good, but you got to get away from work and just take your mind completely off it. Wes, what are you most excited about uh, in 2020? Um, you know, with your new role, uh, you know, what's going on with mortgage, whatever. What are you most excited about? Well, I tell you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'll tell you, like like any growing business, Lone Beam has survived. A lot of turmoil over the years. Uh, we had some really awesome times, had some challenging times. Uh, we're doing more production now than we ever have in the history of the company. But up. we are obviously facing um, unprecedented events. Uh, what I like about it is our teams have stepped up to the challenge. Uh, they've, they've shown that, that we are resilient, we're nimble, we, we address things head on without pretending like it's not there. Uh, but this year, you know, this year and going into next year, we've got new initiatives. We've got expanding relationships. We've got clients that love what we do. Uh, we've got smart people on the job. We've got uh, great leadership. All these different things are adding into it. And that gives me the confidence and the excitement that we're going to stay focused and we're going to continue to be the leader in the industry. Uh, and honestly, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. With that, then, Wes, we will. Uh, You're welcome. Say goodbye. Thank you for being on the show, um, and uh, we look forward to 2020 and seeing what you do with the with the new role with uh, Lumbee. Thanks for the opportunity to babble. Appreciate it. Bye, guys.